Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're finally going to be finishing the Canadian LEV kit I've been working on for quite a long time. To finish that, we're going to be doing some weathering pieces and adding a little few details. Doing that, we're going to be using some rust effects and some enamel washes. They will add a lot of detail to the kit, as well as a lot of sand pigment. Let's get right into that. Starting out with the wash oils. Now, I was just spreading these around, kind of putting them wherever, getting a good base coat on, just kind of making it look messy. And it's big to not really care where you put them on here because you can always wash them down and bring them back later. So that's all we're doing here, just using a brush, applying all of it everywhere, getting it really nice and dirty on all the sides and the front and of course going into the under areas there and this will really help darken up and kind of just add some depth to these darker areas of the kit and get all there as well as keeping in mind where oil and grime would build up on an actual thing like this so around the bolts around the joints where oil can leak out and seep over time then once it's all dry we'll go back with a q-tip with some enamel thinner and kind of thin it down and blend it in and make it look a lot less like it was just splotched on with a brush and a lot more like it was actually just kind of grimed up and happened naturally and once it's been softened with the enamel thinner, kind of just going over with a brush. And doing the same thing on the upper areas, just of course less, because they would be less dirty in real life. After that, we're going to move on to really dirtying up some of these tarps and stuff that we added on in the previous video. That will really help darken them up and kind of differentiate them from the rest of the kit. Making them look not like they were just the exact same thing painted but a separate piece that's been used and then just adding all of the little more details getting around all the things and making those details pop for that we're on to the pigments and I went really heavy on the pigments with this one because I really wanted to make it look like it was properly out in service with a ton of dust on it a lot of these when you look at pictures they have so much dust they barely even look green anymore so really added a ton of dust, just kind of sprinkling it on then coming back with the fixer and brushing it in, making sure it all gets solided up and stuck on properly. And of course doing multiple, multiple layers of that. Really just working up the dust and working big chunks into the areas that they would settle in and stick onto the sides of the LAV. Just kind of getting them good. As well as going over with multiple passes really making sure that they can get in and look all good. Now, jumping ahead in time a little bit, we're still just doing the same thing. Fixing on pigment, adding a little bit more, waiting for it to dry, and then repeating. I didn't film a ton of this because I was honestly practicing, getting good at doing the pigments themselves. This is basically the first time I've done any real pigment work on a model kit like this, so I was taking my time doing it all properly, getting it all in well. And that's really it for these pigment parts. It turned out looking pretty good. There's some areas I could have improved and some areas that I think came out looking really good. But it was learning experience, making it look good, and I think it turned out pretty well. And you can see he's still doing the same thing here on multiple parts of the kit. Just getting everything on the same rinse and repeat cycle. Then moving on to the back and kind of rear underside of the LAV and just doing the same, adding a ton of sand, putting the fixer over it and putting it on. Now for this one, I was using Vallejo's sand pigment with AK pigment fixer worked pretty well. It seemed to clump up a fair bit, but I honestly don't have a ton of experience with pigment as I said, so we'll try new ones as I go along building other kits and see which ones are best, but for my purposes this one worked pretty well. 
Then we're on to doing the same for the tires, but we're going to do a little differently because the tires, of course, going against the ground, being low, they're going to be getting the most amount of sand to them. So really starting out with just kind of dousing them and coating them in the sand pigment and putting even more pigment fixer on them and then putting even more sand over top of them. Just getting them super covered in pigment, super covered in sand so they look really dusty and go along with the rest of the model. That's pretty much it for the first stage of the tires. Now on another tire doing basically just the same. As I went I kind of varied how much I did just so the tires don't all look exactly the same on the LAV. Now I really found doing these pigments on this kit really fun. Like I say it's the first time I've done them on a full major kit like this and it really added a lot of detail. Definitely can make some improvements but I think it was pretty good all around, especially on these tires, making them look very dusty, making them look really nice to look at. Then for the fronts of the tires, I just kind of coated the front of them with the pigment fixer, making it very wet and have a ton of stick to it, and then just dabbling on and brushing in all of the pigment. Now, for doing the pigment, I was using just an old paintbrush that was already kind of messed up and bad. It wasn't a very good paintbrush to begin with, but it works good for applying these messy pigment stuff like this. And for the tires, that worked really well. Then, just to kind of finish them up, I applied some extra pigment fixer to them and ran them along the paper towel that was covered in pigments. And this really added some kind of worn in run over looking details to the tires and it really helped a fair bit just to kind of unify them all to the model. Now once the tires are all done we can glue them to the kit and going on to the kit just using some super glue the areas that we're gluing them on with weren't painted in the first place so it's not too hard just using super glue lining them up getting them all in good. Now the work we did in the very first part of this video all a while ago making sure that they all lined up properly and sit flat really helps here making sure that you don't have to do much extra work getting them lined in then we're on to some more of the small details like the lights here and i'm just painting the ones that needed color with some tamiya translucent paints these are the front kind of turn light and signal lights so they get a little bit of orange and then of course just gluing them on. Now I back coated the insides of the housings with some reflective and metallic paint just to kind of make them shine and pop out a little bit even though they'll be pretty covered by the cage. Then we've got this little I don't even know what to call it tow cable or just a, a metal strap. It originally made this out of some copper wire and I just coated it in some gray paint and then added a ton of rust effects to really rust it up, make it look like it was just an old tow cable or metal wire that had been used a lot. And then just kind of gluing it onto the front of the LAV. Seen on a lot of images, they would throw cables and baggage up here, so it seemed to fit pretty well. And that's basically all for the details. Now we're on to adding the cage. And this was a fairly tedious part because of course it's a custom piece that I designed and fabricated myself. So fitting it up was quite difficult, but I used a lot of picks to make sure I got all of the arms and pieces pushed down and glued down all together. Honestly didn't film a ton of this just because it was a tedious part and I had to focus on just getting it on properly. After that, I decided to add a few little ration boxes and stuff, the same things that we put onto the turret earlier on, just to kind of add it in. I've seen a lot of pictures of strikers and other slat armor vehicles in service that had stuff kind of stuffed in everywhere. Then it's on to the antennas. And with a big flame from a lighter, just heating up an old sprue and then stretching it out. This is a very common method, a lot of people use it. I've used it for every kit that I've done antennas on. I really like it, it works well. You can make antennas or cables, wires to hold stuff down, and just cut it off of 
the sprue bits and you have a perfect little antenna and once you get good enough at it you can even bend them and have them kind of shaped into the areas and in the ways you want and we're going to move on to the very final little finishing detail on this kit which this kit came with a few of these little signs and posters. Some of them were oddly low resolution, but these ones looked quite good. It's basically just a normal vehicles need to stay back sign from military vehicles as you don't want some civilian vehicle getting really close to your tank. So just cut it out and then we put some little holes in it and some of the wire we made from the sprue in. Now it really shows the multi purpose of those sprue wires. They don't just have to be antennas, they can also be used as little connecting wires and poking holes in it, threading them through, and then just putting some super glue on the front and gluing those cables on it. And really just push the cables down, making sure they look like they're under tension and held in really nice. And with doing all that It'll basically be the last bits of this kit and just get all those little details finished up. With that, this kit is basically done. Just gotta glue these last two wires on here and then cut them off, of course, and glue them on, make sure they're tensioned. And we're done with this kit, the first build of the channel. I mean, I've absolutely loved building it. It's been a really fun, enjoyable build. The parts that I added were pretty tedious but overall these trumpeter kits are quite solid and first attempt at doing a full sand weathering job like this I think it turned out pretty darn good now we're gonna be coming back in the next few weeks with some more builds some even crazier projects but for now I really hope you enjoyed this first series sorry for it being a little delayed I got sick but here's some beauty shots see you guys next week mm -hmm.